quarter of the numbers for the first half. Time of possession is big time. Uh, look at the bottom of your screen. Uh, 17 minutes for FSU. They have total 267 total yards. They outgained uh, Syracuse in every uh, phase, uh, rushing the ball, passing it. But the only one that matters is the one at the top, and that's the score. FSU has a three-point lead. 18 more plays, too. Yeah. Casey Weldon, 158 yards and two touchdowns. Lee is the leading rusher, and Knox, as we mentioned, uh, came into the game with only two receptions. Leads with five today. You can say that Glenn Young's having yeah, a half. He isn't is it? having a, a heck of an inside linebacker. Brooks has got six. Joseph, three. Here's what happened in the second quarter alone. Florida State uh, scored 10 points, total plays 23 to 14, 138 total yards to only 13. Time of possession was about the same, but the results were a little different. Ready for the second half to get underway. The deep people are Felix Harris and Tiger McMillan for Florida State. O'Neill kicks it off. It'll go to the end zone, and it will not be returned by Felix Harris. And so O'Neill is, is back on target, where he kicks it into the end zone, and you don't return it. And Florida State will come out with uh, basically the same lineup that we had. We're checking to see Casey Weldon is out there because he's pretty sore. But he is at quarterback with Ampley and Edgar Bennett. Up front, it's Stevenson, Dixon, Baker, the center, Morrison, Mancini. Mancini struggling with a week of the flu. McCorby wide, uh, Johnson open uh, at tight end. First half possessions for Florida State. Took them a while to get started, but once they did, they did right well. So let's see what happens. This could be quite a big moment right here in this ball game as Amp Lee, whose full name is Anthony. Anthony, spelled A-N-T-H-O-N-I-A, pronounced Anthony. Just short of the first down. Where'd you get that information? From his mom. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, a half a yard. Florida State comes out of the locker room ready uh, ready for a bear in the third quarter. Bennett for the first down out to the 32-yard line. As we start the second half, here's Jack. Keep Coach Paul Pasqualoni said that his Syracuse people have played the way he'd like them to. He wants to not have as much given up on the first down defensively. Not the same for Coach Bobby Bowden. He is going to change his offense. He said we did a lot of east-west running. Now we're going to run it right up the middle. We feel Syracuse is exhausted. Get that feeling. I think in the last five, six minutes of that first half, you could sense that. They were getting a little tired. But we'll see. They've got a pretty good record on grass outdoors. Weldon's pass to the sidelines. Normally a, a dangerous pass because you've got to throw it a long way. Sometimes it's hard to get a whole lot on it. Shannon Baker's out there by himself. Man coverage by Greg Walker. So that graphic of the pass distribution earlier, that's the 10th pass caught by a wide receiver this afternoon one only by the tight end and three to the backs now, those two guys are out there all by themselves I mean there's nobody else it's a two-man game right That's there for sure makes it simple Just one on one out there second down and two and it's Ampley going outside for the first down and he gets it up to about the 49 yard line before Glenn Young and Tony Montemoro bring him down I wonder if Amp Scott has ever really showed us the full burners. You think he has? Well, you know, he never turns them on. He's always seemed to have something in reserve. He glides and glides until he needs it. And then can turn it on. I think that's a smart way to do it. First down for the Seminoles. They lead 17-14, just starting the second half of play. Number one against number 10. All day for Weldon, and he lets it rip for Baker. Shannon Baker has the most speed 
of anybody on the receiving core. Just glides by him, great over the uh, shoulder catch. They mark it on about the one yard line. First and goal, Florida State. That was set up at halftime. That's the third or fourth play yep. Florida State has run. Yep. The coaches upstairs came down and said, you get in this situation, play action pass, you'll hold the safety over the top. Bennett, touchdown. Surge. Give it to the up back. Maori for the extra point. Out of Brad Johnson. Hold is missed it. Uh oh. Down to the next to last day of the season. And John Smoltz. Right now, let's send you out to San Francisco and Jack Buck. Jack. Trevor Wilson, the pitcher. Four-nothing Giants. Two out in the ninth. And strike one to Murray, who lost the bat. That's 0-2. Oh and, and now you Atlanta Brave fans are only one strike away from being the champions of the West and playing in Pittsburgh Wednesday night. Four-to-nothing Giants. Runner at second. Two out. Two strikes to Eddie Murray. All of the fans on their feet here. As we said before, you'd think the Giants are in the pennant race. They just want to beat the Dodgers. And they're about to. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Scott watching what's going on at Candlestick Park with a runner at second, two out. One and two to Murray. Out of play, and the count stays one and two. This is typical of the postseason excitement we're going to have coming your way beginning Tuesday night in Minneapolis. That's Bob Ojeda watching it. They're watching in Atlanta. The Braves beat Houston today. Another foul ball prolongs the drive, makes it a 23-14 ball game for Florida State. This will, I think, down the road prove to be a very important series in this ball game. Right here. Key drive right here Modern coming up. Atlanta players and fans are glued to this scene. Robbie Thompson gets to it. In Atlanta, let the celebration begin. Congratulations, Braves. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves. A two-hit shutout by Trevor Wilson. Here's the scene in Atlanta, Georgia. Bobby Cox, the manager of the Braves. He has won the West. And into the winning clubhouse. First time since 1982. Great fan support down in Atlanta this year. And this ball. Because they beat Houston. Ball is at the 29 yard line. We're at second down and nine. Who would have ever thought that Atlanta would come back and win after uh, the last few years, huh? The Braves? I'll tell you about it in a minute. Second down and nine. <laughs> Braves with that little freeze option going down the line. Hooks his pass downfield, and it is incomplete. Short hopped it. Is Miles short hopped it. Couldn't come up with it. The ball was low. Well, Minnesota came from last to first. That was the first team to do it. Yep. Now Atlanta has gone from last to first. Yep. So, quite a story. The whole South will applaud that one. If you're bent the other way, I might suggest to you that when the season before the season, Atlanta was a 100 to 1 choice. 
Third down and nine. They got Graves. 97 is the man that tied him up, Reggie Freeman, and then Marvin Jones put him away. Back at the 25 yard line, it's fourth down and 13. It's Freeman's sixth sack on the year. Take a look at Buckley. Well, let's stick it dynamite's not over. Buckley is the short fuse. They need a big hit here from O'Neill. Gets it out and gets it well out. He runs Buckley all the way back to the 24-yard line. He's got some help but not enough, and goes down around the 26. 51-yard punt and a three-yard return. He's ranked in the top 15 in all-time wins in both football and basketball, Notre Dame and Syracuse. The thing that strikes me about that is Notre Dame has already run off the basketball coach that put him in that posture, and I hear a lot of talk about Syracuse doing the same. Kind of strange sometimes. On first down from the 27 yard line, there are penalty flags flying all over the place. Feature call goes against the Seminole. Florida State has been in this situation 4 0 several times and have not been successful. It's a hang on time right now, though, I think, for Syracuse. Yeah, they're uh, on the ropes. Got to be careful. Yeah. And Bobby's looking for the knockout punch. He's won 46 of his last 52 games. Back him up five on first down. Slip by Lee and down he goes. So Ant Lee, who had uh, started left and had uh, planted to come back to the right where he had room, but he lost his foot. So it's remarkable how well this field is held up for it. It, it really is, Keith, and uh, you know, as hard as it rained before the ball game, it was coming down in buckets for hours. This field uh, with the prescription athletic turf has really held up. Second down, call it 16. Casey Weldon lets it go, has a man, Eric Terrell. And it's first down, Florida State up at the 48-yard line. They're roaring down below in Jackson on them. And Keith, I'm here in the end zone, and right above me is the Florida State Seminole Neon Spear. Now, it's a noise meter, and when the spear gets totally lit, this place is on fire. And these people have been into this game since about the end of the first quarter, and it is absolutely bedlam down here right now. You can handle it. You can do Indianapolis, Daytona, not to mention Charlotte and Michigan. You can handle it. Yeah, got those earplugs in. <laughs> First down, 48-yard line. Pitch it back to Lee. Let him search a little bit. He trips as he found where he wanted to go, but couldn't quite clear the stack. Weldon on the day is 16 of 26 and 244 yards and two touchdowns. Weldon did not start to the middle of last season. That was his fourth year at Florida State. He waited around, waited his turn a long time. He is 10 and 0 as a starter, and Bobby Bowden says that he may be the best quarterback he's ever had at Florida State. He and his wife Lori both graduate this coming December. Weldon's pass to the sidelines again. He got that one-on-one -on -one matchup over there, and it was for Terrell against Walker. Walker's getting tired of picking on him because they've been throwing at him all day. Well, he's been out there by himself. The style of defense that Syracuse has been using is everything underneath. No, no big plays except for that one pass on the last possession. Amp Lee, incidentally, on his last carry has uh, 17 for the day, and he has now reached 100 yards. The ball is resting at the 44-yard line of Syracuse. It is third down and two. And he doesn't 
and get it. Camp Lee trying for the first down is going to come up short. You go here. Yeah, you, you, you know, you, Bowden is the master of the tricks. Uh, fourth and one. Whether he leads his offense in or whether he puts in the punt team. Here go. Bobby calls them, you know, a lot of people call them different things. Uh, gimmick plays, uh, gadgets. Bobby calls them barnyard plays. And he's got them for every situation. Coming out of the end zone, going in the end zone, punting, uh, kicking off, the whole gamut. So he'll run them when you don't least expect them. I'll be surprised if anybody gets it other than uh, Ant Lee, and I'm already surprised because they throw the ball to Eric Terrell, and Greg Walker put a heck of a play on him. He hit him just when the ball arrived, flattened him, the ball came out. Syracuse takes over at their own 42-yard line. Bowden gets uh, Weldon outside the pocket. Now you're one-on-one -on -one with your wide receiver. Walker's just going to make a great play. The receiver was there, the ball was there, and he just came up and knocked it loose. Walker, number 17, is a three-year starter for the Orange men. You got to feel offensively that you can complete. The ball was a little bit behind him. Made him wait for it. That's the reason it was uh, knocked away. Terry Richardson checks in at tailback here in the second half for Syracuse. It's a big opportunity now for the Orange men from the 43. Marvin Graves all day to throw it down the middle. The ball is slapped down. Knocked down by Kirk Carruthers, a dropping linebacker. Big fella from um, East Lansing, Michigan. Saw that uh, Miami was a big winner of Oklahoma State. Oklahoma U winning their game. And that, that, that Michigan-Iowa thing, they'll fight that down to the last gasp, probably. Ohio State continues undefeated. Big upset there. And the loveliest of village through the plains. They'll be no party at Toomer's Corner tonight. Doug Womack, your quarterback. The option doesn't work. Howard Dinkins ate it up. I think Florida State's defensive folks have solved it, don't you? They're just stretching him wide, and Florida State can run with anybody east to west. They certainly shut it down that time. Look at Alabama. They're warming up for the third Saturday in October, aren't they? Graves is back now at quarterback. It is third down and nine. Marvin needs to make something happen right here for the Orange men. Let's it go deep. Too long. Penalty flag is thrown on the sidelines. Ismael running against Terrell Buckley. Well, it's going to be interference on Buckley because the ball was in the air when he was jamming the receiver. So the lid on the cookie jar bit his fingers. And that'll be a first down. Check to the right side. Now watch the jam. Buckley's going to hit him. Now he hits him again. And the ball is in the air. You'll see the flag. 15-yard penalty, first down. You can jam him as long as the ball is not in the air. When the ball is in the air, obviously, you got to let him go. And that's a big play right there, and Bowden knows it because it's a, like a turnover. You give him another first down, another set of plays. 41-yard line of Florida State for Syracuse. Touchdown to give him some new life. Inside handoff goes to the fullback, Al Wooten. And he crosses the 30 and will have a first down for Syracuse near the Florida State 29. So it's a big run for Big Al. It is a big run. Uh, to that point, they had only gotten 51 yards uh, for the first uh, two and a half quarters. And a 10-yard run there not only gets them some yardage and another first down, but establishes the fact that they can run the football. Big pileup 
this time as they go back to Wooten. Maybe they thought they wouldn't do it two times yep. in a row. But <laughs> certainly not fool the crowd today, and I mean the weather was so bad this morning you you can't believe it. But 61,231 came, and uh, they're still here. But it really hasn't rained lately. Second down and nine. Little pop pass to the sidelines, incomplete, intended for Padre Ismail. He's from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. He couldn't get to the ball. Oh, look at that! Cincinnati shutting out Louisville, 28-7 to nothing. Wow, that is a surprise. Graves is only one of his last eight. They're not going to beat this team by running it. They they need some big plays. They need Graves to uh, step up and, and make some plays. Boilers won a game. Third down and nine. Marvin Graves back pressure coming. Screen pass set up for Graham Walker. David Walker. Scrimmage is a penalty flag laying over here on the side, uh, closest to the press box, closest to us. Well, they got to come across here and see what it's about. Looks like a holding call against Syracuse. Yeah. It was a screen pass, which looked pretty good initially, but uh, with the foot speed that Florida State has, he caught up with it. And that turn looked like Pasqual Pasqualoni thought he might get some good yardage out of it, and it's turned out he's going to get a holding penalty. Take for foot! Foot! So that'll back him up 10 yards from the foul oh, or from the. Uh, so it's an 18-yard penalty from 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And it's back just outside the Florida State 46, where it's third down and 27. Obstacles for them. Miami here and Florida at Gainesville. Certainly. And, you know, they've got some games in between, but uh, but those are those are going to be the key ones at the end. Third down now and 27. After getting the time back on the clock. Graves gets it away. It's up in the air and incomplete. Leon Fowler got a piece of it. Number three right there. Forty-five is Ismail, the, the man that has the two touchdowns. Fowler is number three. He's got help to the outside. They're going in and out on him. That's just good coverage. Mickey Andrews, the coordinator, doubling Ismail. Says, let's take him away. And Pat O'Neill is in the game. Fifth punt of the day. Best one was 51 yards. He wants a high hanger here. Buckley is back. And it bounces into the end zone. So Florida State will have it at the 20. They lead by nine. Five and a half minutes to go, third quarter. A college football tradition at Syracuse involves the number 44. Jim Brown wore it. Ernie Davis wore it. So did Floyd Little. Now, this young man, Terry Richardson, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. KC Weldon pumps, lets it fly for Shannon Baker, and he can't get to it. Covering on the play, Greg Walker. And down on the ground is KC Weldon, who gets up one more time. I mean, KC Weldon has been hit enough in the last two weeks to get a week off. That little pump there was a little out and up. Gets him outside the pocket. 
and there's the bump that you were talking about. You know, everybody, nobody ever sees that in the stadium. You know, they're always following the ball downfield, but uh, the coaches see it. Michigan out to an eight-point lead now in Iowa City, and Baylor by seven over Houston. Weldon threw that ball about uh, 70 yards. This is Anthony, Anthony, and to the 24. Tim Sanquist brought him down. So Michigan leading by eight. And if they can hang on, or if they go ahead and beat Iowa down in Iowa City, that is that is a huge win in the Big Ten Chiefs. Oh, especially after that uh, loss to Florida State at home last week. That's some trouble down the road with Illinois and Ohio State. Illinois in particular, I think. Kevin Knox, number 81, who was so busy in the second quarter, is back in the lineup now for the Seminoles. It is third down and six. Knox breaks it off. He's wide open. Pass goes instead to Edgar Bennett. Bennett rolls on up the field and is down around the 45-yard line. Ball came out, but they rule him down. Greg Walker's going to go home feeling like he ran all the way down to Tallahassee. They have really worked on him today. Here's Bennett right here. Watch him as he's going to slide to the left and then sneak right out. Nobody will be there. The linebackers are blitzing, flying out of there. It's a little delay and a nice touch pass. Very nice touch by Weldon. See if he was down before the ball came out. Looks like the ball was out before his knee hit the ground. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but now it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sean Jackson, a sophomore tailback, in for behind Amp Lee. He's 6'2", 220 pounds, and he's from New Orleans. Mitchell, who made that tackle, Keith, uh, he likes to talk a lot. We mentioned earlier, he. Uh, Linebacker, nickname, be, nickname because of all of his talking is they call him Bubblicious. I beg your pardon. Bubblicious. <laughs> <laughs> Likes to chatter, but talks a lot on the field. <laughs> Second down, 11. Bennett to the 49. Here's Roger. 20 yards and the touchdown, his seventh of the year. 26-18 Wolverines. Howard gets a touchdown every 2.8 receptions, and Michigan has just intercepted. They've got it back again. Meanwhile, Cincinnati leads Louisville at halftime 27 to nothing. Let's go back to Keith. Well, that's stunning. Cincinnati is beating Louisville like that. That is, isn't it? Mm. Amp Lee is back in. Casey Weldon is back.
to 14 ball game. 16 point lead for the Florida Seminoles. And we got a quarter to go. Well, last week, as you take a look at Ismael, last week Desmond Hire was back there. They didn't kick to him, and they're not kicking to Ismael in the second half. Second time they've popped it up. Yes, that's it, but you got to kick it a little better than that. I mean, Al Wooten is standing up there. He makes the catch. He just puts his head down and runs all the way back to the 49-yard line. Tonight, Tony Danza and Judith Lightstar has some time and throws an interception. Throws it right to Clifton Abraham. Florida State threatening to blow this baby wide open. Syracuse is not in a, uh, in a situation where, where they enjoy being in, behind and having to throw. They're an option team. Abraham is right there. He was in a zone to the outside. Graves never saw him and picks it off. Graves' last 10 attempts, he's one completion out of 10 with two interceptions. Yeah. Not good. Sean Jackson and Paul Moore will be in the backfield now for Florida State snap. And goes to Big Jackson. Sean will pick up about three yards on the carry with 2.22 to play in the third quarter. You mentioned the numbers lately for Graves. So Casey Weldon, on the other hand, on the game is 19 of 31 for 319 yards and three touchdowns. He's only thrown two interceptions in over 120 passes this year. Those three touchdowns today give him uh, 13 on the year. Weldon loops it outside. Pass is caught. And he's the load, 6-2 and 2-60. Next Saturday, another college football doubleheader for you at 12 Eastern, the Nittany Lions of Penn State against number two Miami in the Orange Bowl. And then at three, it's regional action in the ACC area. Ball is on the 44, first down. This is Sean Jackson again, Weldon Jardage. 328 today. That is a career high for him. And yet Florida State did not get the lead until oh, late in the first half. Well, the Syracuse game plan was sound coming in, and that was not to give them any big plays, just hang on. They got some big plays from their uh, from their special teams. The Ismail running back the kickoff, and their offense took their first possession down and scored. Second down and five. There goes Jackson again. They're left seasoning him. And at 6'2", 220, he would be the perfect foil for Amp Lee, who is such a darting slasher. Jackson, on the other hand, seems to enjoy running over linebackers. They got a lot of depth in this backfield. As you see the numbers on Casey Weldon. Gives him 13 touchdowns and only two interceptions on the year. UCLA back to the lead over California. That's been a seesaw. Big game in the Pac-10. Weldon. Fryer can't hold it. That Fryer defended by Dwayne Joseph. They haven't thrown against Joseph much today. They've chosen pretty much to pick on uh, Greg Walker. Joseph came into the ball game with three interceptions. He normally plays the short side or the boundary side of the field, allowing Walker, the other corner, to play the wide side. It'll be second down and 10 with 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. This right here tells you the story of the third quarter and the story of the game. Florida State was leading 17 to 14 at half. And now at the end of the third quarter, they're leading 30 to 14. Jackson. That'll do the quarter. 
Number one, Florida State, 30. Number 10, Syracuse, 14. Back. We got a flag. Yep, we do have a flag. Now let's see what they decide to do about the penalty, and then we'll take our break here. Threw somebody out, didn't they? I don't know. He grabbed him and backed him off. Uh, they threw him out on the chair. Bobby Baker, the center, was the man I think that uh, Dale Phillips was talking to. Well, it's against Florida State. Yeah, personal foul, and he is out. And it was Baker, apparently, the center. Huh? So the quarter's over. Football doubleheader next Saturday. To give you an idea of how things have been going for Syracuse as you watch the safety develop here with McIntosh sacking the quarterback in the end zone. In the first quarter, Syracuse went for 121 yards. Since that time, they've had 23. that touchdown run of about 55 yards he was sucking for some air looking for the uh, oxygen tank <laughs> and uh, after the safety they will put it down on the tee and uh, kick it Pat O'Neill from the 20 Woo. he's got a leg of the half all the way back just inside the 10 yard line for Terrell Buckley. And they get him. He sort of makes you hold your breath too, doesn't he? Uh huh. Out to the 37 yard line. The Florida State schedule, those are the games won. And uh, of course, uh, one would guess they're going to win this one, though uh, there's 13 and a half minutes to play. But you look on down the road, Virginia Tech could put a knot on them. Uh, go to LSU. It's been a tough year over there. You don't figure the Middle Tennessee State to give them that much trouble. Louisville is apparently having a lot of trouble. South Carolina jumped up and scored 53 today, but those two at the end of the season. Uh huh. One here, one there. Weldon over to Jackson. Sean Jackson. And there are enough white shirts over there to bring him down on the 40 yard line. to roll up a huge number of tackles in this ball game. Gain on the play is about three yards. Second down and seven coming up. There's active Division I coaches. Uh, Bobby Bowden is second in wins. You know what? Based on uh, the fact that Brad Johnson and uh, Casey Weldon both uh, leave this year. Uh-huh. Florida State could be an option team next year with the quarterbacks that they have. Charlie Ward in particular. This is Sean Jackson. That's close to a first down. Mitchell is pulling away now against Iowa, leading by 15. The Baylor Bears. You might wonder if, uh, you know, what Casey Weldon is doing still in this ball game. I mean, he's, you're up by uh, 18 points with, I think the reason he's still in there is that there's about 12 minutes to go in the ball game. I think this will probably be his last series. You never want to, and he's got a bunch of the second team players in there already. The backup center is in there. The backup backs are in there. I don't think that Bobby wants to change too many things too quickly. Leave him in for this series and then put, uh, uh, Brad Johnson or the uh, the next quarterback who is Hart uh, who threw the ball I mean Ward excuse me Charlie Ward who threw that pass back to uh, Weldon in last week's game against uh, in Michigan half a ball gets him a first down at the 47 yard line Casey Weldon is hit just as he releases the ball number 95 put a lick on him for Syracuse, Garland Hawkins. Hawkins had a couple of sacks a couple of weeks ago against the University of Florida. 
UCLA looks like they may about be about ready to beat California in the Rose Bowl leading by 10 in the fourth quarter. I thought the Bruins might be the turnaround team in the Pac-10 this year. What a nice job they've done huh? Terry Donahue and uh, was it Homer Smith the offensive coordinator out there. Yep. Green pass. Got it to Edgar Bennett. Bennett's got a first down at the Syracuse. 37 yard line and here you've got a quick question for you who do you think is probably the most famous FSU football player to ever be Fred Belitnikoff or maybe Deion Sanders nah, I don't think so probably a guy by the name of Burt Reynolds who everybody knows for his Emmy Award winning acting well he is very tightly related to this team and we're going to tell you a little bit more about how important he is to this team because he is also the team's designer you see, in the old days, they wore these old mustard-colored uniforms. Burt Reynolds took a Hollywood designer and designed the new uniforms that last year were voted the best by Sporting News. He sent them. He made them and sent them and said, wear them if you like them. They have since then. When he was a mere lad, uh, romping around the piney woods here, they called him Buddy. This is Sean Jackson to the 12. Young man would be starting for a lot of teams. He has the misfortune of playing at Florida State behind Amp Lee. Rolling up some numbers today. And he'll probably get to play the rest of the way, at least until somebody else is sent in. The Seminoles came in averaging 48 points a game. That's second best in the nation. for Jackson 68 yards and a touchdown the point is good 39 14 number one leads number 10 they just tired and they got to the river southerners are just all the same <laughs> they hit it hit him a lick kick it off. Maori hits it high. Didn't want to kick it to Cudra Ismail and it's accepted at the 26 yard line where Syracuse will go to work and here's Roger again. Well thank you very much Keith and for those of you that haven't heard Atlanta won their eighth straight game. They beat Houston today five to two. David Justice catching the final out and the celebration began at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta that increased tenfold when the Giants beat the Dodgers at Candlestick to give the Braves the National League West title. Let's go back to Keith. And first down, boy, they'll, they'll, they'll be partying around Fulton County tonight, won't they? Not to mention DeKalb, Cobb, and uh, all the others. Uh-huh. And here comes David Walker. And David will pick up about seven yards on the carry. And I think the Syracuse team, though, is a team that's going to find a place in the postseason because they've got East Carolina, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and Rutgers are uh, on the road with East Carolina, Temple, Boston College, West Virginia at home, and the last three are in the carrier dome. Oh, yeah, there's no question that this is a good uh, team. They just ran into a team of Florida State that's, uh, but nobody slowed them down yet. I don't know if anybody can. I don't either. There's your option pitch to Walker. First down as David spins it up across the 40 to the 42. Walker on the carry. Walker is the leading rusher for uh, Syracuse. Here are some 
all-time uh, rushing leaders all who attended Syracuse University. It's just a shame that Big Ernie Davis, we lost him so young in life. That's what he might have done, huh? Yep. yep. Great player. At the 42. 39-14 ball game, Florida State in control. Graves back. Jumps it off. Is that lateral? No, they're waving it off as an incomplete forward pass. It was close was to David Walker was Walker. looking to see how many of uh, those garnet colored uh, folks were coming down the road and uh, he looked and he said help <laughs> well Bowden is the second winningest active we showed you that graphic earlier in the last four years he's had his team finish in the rankings fourth third third and second he hopes to change that this year that's David Walker not much well at one time that they were uh, so heralded and they opened the season and just got hammered right out of the blocks 31 nothing and then went on and had a very good year but, when you get bopped by Miami in your opening game, it's a miracle you can put the pieces back together and win the rest, but they did that. Yep. And Paul Pasqualoni has done a great job at Syracuse, taking over for, uh, you know, a, really a legend up there, Mac. Uh, Don McPherson, uh, Dick McPherson, really set up the program, turned it around, and uh, it's a tribute to both of those men that they've won their first four ball games this year. Graves lets it go down the middle. He's got a man right there, Antonio Johnson. And that'll be a first down for Syracuse. Pass was made by number 80 and Coming up after the game, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report with Roger and Bo. Scores and highlights from across the country. As Bo and I haven't been able to hear him today, has he been affable today or was he a little cranky because of Michigan's loss last week? I haven't heard him. <laughs> I got word from the truck that he was cranky. He was cranky? <laughs> First down, 37. Pitch it out, got away with it. They held the ball a long time behind the line of scrimmage. Walker was able to get it, hold it, and move it up the field, very close to a first down. I don't know. You'd, you'd have to have a pretty good stomach to watch your quarterback standing out there in the middle of the melee holding the ball that long. <laughs> it is a first down. Ball is now on the Florida State 27. So the Orange men showing some pluck here. Marching the ball down the field. Side play to Marcus Lee. And not much. The 25, maybe a couple of yards on the carry. Leon Fowler coming out of the secondary. Marvin Jones goes back on the field. Some of the uh, starting unit beginning to drift back out there now. Talking to uh, Bobby Bowden yesterday, he was a little bit concerned that the team would have a letdown, and he said this was the first week in a long time he'd ever remember not practicing the entire week in pads. He thought they were a little beat up coming out of the Michigan game. He didn't know how they were going to react in this game, but it seems like they've done very well. Well, that's how you take care of the freeze option right there. Carl Simpson, number 95. Junior from Baxley, Georgia. That's five sacks of the Syracuse quarterback. You know, the, this fight song and the continuity of it and uh, the boundless energy of the band matches that of Southern California, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yep. So, so 
Gal's not playing that song as much as uh, the Seminoles are. Not now, no. <laughs> that ball is thrown a little bit behind Walker. If the ball is in front of David, he may well have scored, but it was just behind him enough for Mac Knight to get involved with it. Mac almost intercepted it. And it's an incomplete four times. Caught it and dropped it about three times. So it is fourth down for the Orange and 14. And with the score of 39 to 14 against them, they got to go. From the Florida State 31. Whoa, he threw that thing hard. And he didn't get it picked off. It was thrown for Antonio Johnson and thrown so hard that Richard Coase just couldn't hold it. So the Seminoles hold and take over. Yard pretty much in the first quarter. Stop kicking the kickoffs to him. He hasn't called a pass. They have literally taken him right out of the ball game. Yeah, and the two options that he ran, uh, they stuffed those out of bounds for minus shorty. Brad Johnson is now the quarterback. He's a former starter, so he's not green. And this is Tiger McMillan, who's been the kick returner, a freshman from Kissimmee. And Brad Johnson is a 6'6 senior big fella. Here's another big fella, Jack. Keith, what you're listening to is called the Tomahawk Chop. Well, they use their fake tomahawk, their hand. Now, we've seen a lot of it at the Atlanta Braves game where, you know, Ted and Jane have done it. But here's the place where it originated seven years ago with Deion Sanders. And I kind of like the song itself. The words are real easy. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you do that awfully well, Jack. Carrying the ball is Omar Ellison on a reverse, and it doesn't get much. I know a place just outside of Chattanooga who got a pretty good job for a guy like you, Jack. <laughs> they sell cigars. <laughs> Brad Johnson was the starter up until midseason last year when Casey Weldon moved in, and Weldon is going to continue today undefeated. But this is a big, strong armed senior quarterback that I think will find a place to play in the NFL. I really do. Fifth year senior. He's really big and strong. Just flicks that ball out there. Pass is caught by Eric Terrell. The junior from Tallahassee gets a first down for the Florida State Seminole. Terrell caught that pass last week against the uh, Wolverines of Michigan. Diving for it in the end zone. Came into the ball game with 14 receptions and three touchdowns. doing for Tiger McMillan that time just no room for it number 50 Kevin Mitchell is still in there plugging away sophomore out of Harrisburg Pennsylvania sophomore he's got two more years so you'll see 50 around a whole lot Jackson, William Floyd in the I formation now for Florida State. Johnson lets it go. And it is incomplete. Eric Terrell was the man downfield, circling toward it, but no chance to get to it. 573 total yards for FSU. Woo! That's Glenn Young giving him a howdy and the reason and the reason that uh, Florida State is throwing the ball uh, Keith is that Bowden wants to get some work for his backup quarterback should anything happen to Casey Rowe so the update on Michigan Iowa Wolverines would seemingly have it in hand here comes your rift oh, didn't give it Jackson kept it Sean Jackson rumbling on down the road 
Out of bounds at the 23. Jackson's a backup running back, but he may end up with uh, over 100 yards here on the afternoon. He's very close to it, I think, now. 97. The toughness of Casey Weldon is an impressive thing, though, because he took a real, I mean, they beat on him last week up in Michigan, as they expect they would. And he's been turned upside down a few times here today. Look at that. Tiger McMillan. Kevin Mitchell brings him down inside the 15. Tiger McMillan is the third team running back. Uh, but they have a they have a kid here that they're really high on. He was the freshman player of the year in the United States last year, a kid named Marquette Smith. And they also got a the defensive player of the year, a kid named Brooks, uh, Derek Brooks. Their recruiting class was one of the top in the country. These two freshmen are going to be outstanding players, and Bowden just continues to, to bring him in here. Marquette Smith has had a, a bruise on his arm and the bicep. He just simply can't hold the ball. That pass, a bullet, through the hands of Kevin Knox and incomplete. And UCLA looks like they're, well, it's still close enough, though. 24 to 17. California undefeated coming into that ball game. Five and a half minutes to play. And as I said earlier, that's a big ball game in the Pac-10 because UCLA and Washington do not play this year. And it was UCLA that derailed the Huskies last year in Seattle with a crippled team. Sean Jackson. You know, a lot of people in the East don't really know about Washington, but we've seen them twice this year and a bunch of times last year. The only team I know of that... Oh, Jackson wide open. No, Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie Johnson wide open. And Johnson, uh, Brad Johnson just laid it right on his number. The two deep zone. Watch the two safeties. They'll go to the outside. The safeties are going to split. Here's Johnson right here. Watch him go straight down the middle of the field. Quarterback uh, sees it. Well coached. Kick is good. Mowry's had a pretty good day. He's only missed one. 3 12 to go in the ball game. It's now 46 14 as Johnson and Johnson. Johnson, hook up. Johnson and Johnson. Florida State University student. Uh, normally his identity is not a talked about thing around here. We don't know who he is really. But everything about him is authentic. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader. It starts with Penn State, Miami. Joe will give it to uh, And the return by Al Wooten is up just about the 27 yards. In the touchdown. Lonnie Johnson is number 85. Going across your screen right there. Good protection. Johnson tall enough, the quarterback Johnson tall enough, he can see over. Throws it right between the two safeties. And Lonnie Johnson with his third touchdown of the year. Mark McDonald, a fifth year senior now out of Klein, Texas. He's in at quarterback. Mark McDonald. Kirby Dardar is in the lineup. Dardar is uh, number 42. And uh, against Florida, he was the one that ran that reverse on the kickoff on the handoff from Terry Richardson and went whistling up the sidelines for a touchdown against the Gators. But Dardar is from uh, here. He's from uh, Tampa. That was the opening kickoff of that uh, Syracuse-Florida game, and uh, that really set the tempo. That got those fans in the Carrier Dome uh, fired up. That is a tough place to play. Oh, boy. It, they are loyal, faithful, and loud. And they're right on your neck. So here's the first play for Mark McDonald. And 
hands it off. Dardar carries. Not much. 625 uh, yards today by Florida State, which is the most ever against Syracuse. And the previous most was 587. That was also Florida State. But don't despair, O ye Orange faithful. They got a good football team. There's no doubt about that. No question. Point up a uh, note we made last week that Oklahoma was the last team, 1985, to start and finish a season first in the AP poll. So Florida State was the preseason number one. Mark McDonald gets mugged behind the line of scrimmage by Sterling Palmer. He's a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Defense for the uh, Seminoles continues to shine, even though it's their second and third team players. You wonder if we're talking about Syracuse as Pat O'Neill comes in. Do you realize since 1936, six, when the National Football League had its first draft, that 163 Syracuse players have been drafted? That's a bunch. Good program. Good punt. Nobody back. And it's kicked out of bounds, and it goes out back just inside the 33-yard line. That's a good kick. 129 to go in the ball game, and with just over four minutes to go, California has come back to tie UCLA in Pasadena. So that war goes on. We really haven't seen any uh, gadget or trick plays uh, out of uh, Bowden this week, but I, I got to laugh at the play that he ran last week talking about the, the throw over to uh, the, uh, the quarterback and then throw back to Casey Weldon. Bowden admitted this week, he says, I got that from uh, Spurrier. I had to call Spurrier and tell him that I got that play, but uh, he said, uh, I ran your play, Steve, but I couldn't call it uh, Gator. I had to call it uh, Crocodile. I just couldn't bring myself to, uh, to call it a Gator. Even though he stole it from, uh, Im you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. If somebody, if a coach likes a play, it'll, it'll spread around the country. There's nothing new no. in football. You know that. No, nope, that's for sure. Three jerseys have been retired here at Florida State University. Fred Golitnikoff, Ron Sellers, and Ron Simmons. Remember those names? This is Jason Pierce carrying the ball. Everybody getting to play now for the Seminoles, and it's just a matter of running out the clock. Florida State's uh, posture is number one in the nation. Almost undoubtedly will go higher than it already is as they lead 46 to 14. Seem destined to win by at least that. It was a big day for Casey Weldon. 22 out of 37, 347 yards, three touchdowns. That's a career high for him. Inside, Pierce again carrying the ball, and now it's a matter of just run the clock. So number one has defeated number 10, but number 10 put some scare in them. It was close at halftime. Florida State, 46. Syracuse, 14. 